Thank you for tuning in to Top of Comic. I'm Brian Top North Comic Mike Garrity. Mike Garrity, how the hell are you? I'm pretty good. How the hell are you? Dude, how the hell are you? What are you, are you gonna be coming at me for, man? I just met you, bro. Okay, so we follow Mike Garrity everywhere. It's Garrity WM on Instagram, but also on Twitter, Miggity Mike G. And um, and right here I say. Uh, I retweeted this this sketch. It's you as a Chicago police police officer, and it looks so real. But I retweeted this sketch, and um, that's because you, you're a big actor in movies and stuff like that. So we'll talk about that too. But um, but Dumb John is your improv group, so it's Dumb John on Instagram. And Recovering Bro is one of the businesses that you're kind of working on, and you're it's a comedy forward business, so you're doing some of the comedy from facing videos for it. I can't wait to watch it. It's Recovering Bro on both Instagram and TikTok, right? TikTok is the recovering bro. Uh, I don't remember why we had to do that, but we were quite annoyed that we had to add the. the oh, the V at the front. Fuck that. Yeah. Like there's some of the recovering bro who can sniff your jock, my Lord. Yeah. I don't know what the, yeah. The, you know what? Let's not, let's pretend there's no other one. <laughs> <laughs> but how, how did that come up? So, I mean, it's like a, it's kind of a fitness brand or a self a self-care brand. Uh, but uh, at what point did they decide to be a little comedy forward and use you for some of the front facing videos? Yeah, well, the, the the story behind that is there is a guy in Chicago where I live who's kind of a, a world-renowned expert in health and wellness. Uh, he works with a lot of professional athletes and, um, you know, rich people, I guess. <laughs> but he, he's like the go-to guy for uh, biometrics and, and strength training and, uh, you know, functional medicine, Chinese medicine, all that stuff. Uh, long story short, I... Uh, <laughs> and then I'm just going to tell you a long story. So I'm, <laughs> short, but, uh, so I'm a huge Trekkie. I'm a big Star Trek fan. And uh, I was, I'm in a, I was in a group chat with some guys talking about Star Trek and I didn't know any of them personally. I think I knew one of them, which is how we got it started. Okay. But there were several guys on the chat I didn't know. Uh, and then we were at a, a birthday party and one of the guys from the chat was there and I got to talking to him. Turns out he's a director and a filmmaker. And, and he's like, you know, I, I saw on your Instagram that you're into fitness. Cause I, I'm also, you know, I also like to work out. And uh, he goes, I just got done doing a documentary about this guy, uh, this Dr. Dustin Nelson guy. Uh, if you ever want to see his gym, it's not too far from the theater you perform at. And I was like, yeah, that'd be great. So, uh, you know, that's how I met this, this uh, expert guy. And then I, I did a, I do a show at, the IO theater called Armando, which is where we have a guest monologist come and tell stories. Uh, and that inspires the, the improv set that we do. Okay. Um, so I got this director, uh, Kenneth is his name to come and tell stories about this documentary he made. And, uh, the guy in the documentary was in the audience watching and he saw me perform and, uh, approached me later and said, Hey, you know, I've been, I got an idea for business. Uh, I want it to be comedy forward. And I've never seen a comedian, a comedian who's, you know, clearly into weightlifting and things like that. <laughs> who's actually funny. I think you're sort of the perfect. I love that. I you actually, this, yeah, this you project. actually look. So that's how I got involved. Yeah, it's like some people talk yeah. about fitness in a derogatory sense if they're comedian, but it's like you're into fitness and I can actually see it on your body. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which actually kind of made it hard for me in comedy when I was getting started. You know? Okay. Um, how, so, how so? Like, did people I'd be like, what's up, bro? What are you even doing this for? You don't need laughs. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't <laughs> look like if I'm in a, you know, open mic full of comics, I'm the guy there who looks like the one that used to slap the lunch trays out all of their hands growing up you know i look i look like a real bully um, <laughs> have you played a bully on tv that's the only thing the only thing that i ever get booked at is racist cop which is so fun i got a agent thinking i was gonna boost my comedy career and all i get is skinhead auditions because <laughs> <laughs> it's like dude this is not helping your comedy career i know but if it's helping to pay the bills that's all that matters yeah one of the dude who's I've had a comedian on here who always gets typecast as a serial killer. Like on all these yeah. Discovery ID shows, he's like the guy, um, you know, during the voiceover, I don't know if it's B-roll or whatever, who's always like committing the murders. And I'm like, wow, you should really lean into that, you know, just kind of play that part on stage. And so like, as far as recovering bro or any of the comic, comedy characters you are, you play a, I mean, you just play a heightened version of yourself, I think. Yeah, you know, I'm kind of the lens through which the general public can see themselves through because because this other guy, the expert guy, you, he's a fitness model a professional bodybuilder but he's also 
like this genius when it comes to, to really? the human body so he's he's not like someone anyone can really relate to uh, <laughs> so, you're the before version if we can yeah, believe that yeah i'm like the so i play like a you know i've had kind of a wild past in regards to sports and life in general so i just really play that up and kind of play a big a big dumb brute uh, i'm not dumb I, I guess i'm not dumb but uh I love this. Right now, you're figuring out your character, even in real yeah. time. That's wonderful. Like, no, yeah. no, I'm, I'm not dumb. Sure. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not dumb. Just like <laughs> extremely rough around the edges. Yeah. Like, I know all the things. I don't have the vocabulary for the fans. Uh -huh. And I sort of, you know, we do a show called Brose, which is uh, uh, going to be a podcast. But before, Who came up with uh, that shit? He did. He that did. is wonderful. Yeah. I mean, it's playing Rose, right? The drink? Uh, yeah, it's the tagline is just a couple of bros drinking Rose and talking fitness. Oh, that is wonderful. Because um, I've just so been watching High Fidelity, the Chicago TV show. Yeah. And there's that the hilarious Rose, uh, Froze. Like they took Rose and it was a frozen drink oh, and it yeah. became Frozé. And that was a hilarious scene. So Rose. Wow. Yeah. So you can watch the the web series on, on YouTube or on our Instagram. Um, but it's him just trying to kind of teach me you know, a better way to, to do things in regards to health and wellness. And I kind of just troll him the whole time. Like, a, uh, so it's like a smarter way. It's like back in the day, you were a bro and you just lifted hard weights and stuff. And he's like, dude, there's a, he's, there's a smarter way to do this. That's, it's yeah, excellent for your long-term yeah. health, right? That's where the name Recovering Bro came from as well. Nice. Like we, you know, we've all been there. We've all not had the right information at the right time. And yeah. Cause you know, some gym people can, I, I suppose they probably could be low information. I mean, you'd call none of them dumb because they're probably not, but there's slow information. It's like they're yeah. getting this information over lifting weights. It's like some bro is trying to sell me creatinine or the fuck it is or ephedrine or whatever can help them cut weight before a meet. And you're, you're thinking that that's healthy because this guy shredded. It's like, no, man, he just, he's surfing on shitty information too. And so it's nice to have somebody who's not only like a, a big bodybuilder, but somebody who's an expert at this shit. And it's so funny. He's like, I need a before version of me. And but it's, it's, it's almost tough because you're, you're, you know, you're in good shape. And so it's almost tough for somebody like me to, you know, to look at you and be like, that's the, that's somebody who doesn't already know this stuff down cold but you're right that you you can still look and, and be like not into self-care so you're you know, this bro's kind of finally figuring out that he needs to care for himself so he can you know be fit long term yeah, well you look at all the influencers on instagram and they're all shredded and hot and sexy but everything <laughs> they say is wrong you know uh -huh. all their science is wrong okay um first of all they're lying to everyone about everything they don't do the things they're trying to sell <laughs> if they did they um, would be so treaded huh? yeah but also i think you're uh, saying what you're saying based off my headshot when i was in very good shape but if you look at the uh the the, the web series i'm uh you know i've got some life padding around that, that <laughs> life <physique>. padding life <laughs> padding i'm gonna use that yeah i just have to take some pictures for a dating site now and i'm gonna refer to it as life padding you always <laughs> always pick the bad pick worst pictures possible for those sites yeah how come because then uh then there's no like you know it's not like all right first date i uh, was wearing a trench coat and a hat so she has no idea that you know I'm bald and missing an arm. Yeah. The second, the second date, you surprise her, and she's like, "Oh, well, this is." Yeah, this uh, is missing you know, arm. So if you show your worst attributes right up front, and they still yeah. want to go out with you, then uh, you know that they like you for who you really are. Oh, that's what I'm doing. Yeah, like there's some I've been chatting with for a while, so I'm like, I have to put up current pictures because yeah, yeah. I do not want to be nervous when I see you like tomorrow. Uh -huh. You know. Oh, and you got to put up one like really good picture so they know you clean up well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, he, he can clean up well. He's a, he, he's a fixer upper, but he cleans up well. And so yeah, tell me about Dumb John, because I've been seeing this all over the fucking place. And it's like you have this it's called Dumb John, which is funny. And then you have some picture of some lady on Instagram. I have no idea who it is. I apologize if it's a family member, one of the members. But, no. but what the fuck is Dumb John? How did you guys come together? What's the concept? Are you just a troop that will, you know, do whatever the show, whatever the angle of the show is? Or do you have some something particular you do every time? Yeah, we have a very distinct comedic voice, I would say. Yeah, Dumb John is, a, is uh, an improv group that I'm in. Uh, there are four of us, uh, all very, very talented, very funny, very weird people in their own right. Uh, Stephen Plock, Katie McLean, and Linda Orr. Um, and we have been playing together in different forms as Dumb John for, I mean, seven, eight, nine years i don't know somewhere between seven and nine years my lord that's a long time for a improv group right 
Yeah, we've gone through a, diff a few different iterations, but we, you know, we really hit our stride with the current group we have, and uh, we developed our own long form, yeah, you know, form that we kind of do our shows in, uh, and we have a very distinct voice. And that that picture of the lady on our Instagram profile pic that you're talking about, yeah, we don't know who that is, but she <laughs> sort, of, she sort of visually, yes, uh, represents our entire comedic voice. It's a little bit of pride, but of course, it's not. I mean, it's some woman with like you know a '70s haircut or something, but she really has a stoic pride about her. Yeah, we we have a lot like, you know, Katie McLean on our team is from Texas and she's a powerhouse, but very, very strong Texas POV. Uh, you know, I'm from Reno and I've, you know, kind of from a different world than the, than the city folk. And then uh, the other two people on our team are, are, you know, they're not from those areas, but they're weird. So we sort of blended <laughs> all that stuff together and we have a kind of a very, uh, unhinged uh colloquial i don't want to say redneck but sort of sort of like uh maybe what a redneck would be like if they're from a a different dimension and there was a sort of uh intelligence to their uh <laughs> to their out uh, their chaoticness that is not, and like this picture of linda's healthy company corn dogs is that something that you guys made or is that something you took from Riz? There's another recipe from the Dum John cookbook published oh. by Penguin South. It actually might be a recipe, but it's, it's bananas wrapped in, I don't know, meat and some sort of cheese. And I'm just like, that's fucking hilarious, man. I mean, that's bizarre shit. And so when people come to a Dum John show, they can kind of, I mean, you know, maybe expect a little bit of country, but I mean, just kind of out there, like it was bizarre, bizarre rednecks, rednecks from another planet. Yeah, and I don't like to say that we're rednecks because I think we're we're more than that. But I think we probably, you know, a lot of our characters that we play are are people from our, you know, based off people that we grew up with, or people in our lives, or people that we just think are funny, like that woman on our Instagram. Profile, <laughs> you know, so, so who would not fit? So I'm coming in there. I want to be part of Dumb John. I get rejected uh -huh. immediately because what kind of comedy am I trying? Or what kind of character am I really specializing in? Yeah, or just like I come there and I, I try to be um i don't know a uh, feminine met metrosexual is your oh, are fine. you just yeah are you just oh, we like love that no we, <laughs> yeah. we don't you know it's, we don't do just one thing but i think yeah. even if we're playing a you know a, a learned professor of philosophy from london yeah in, you know in the year 1870 that character is still going to sort of have you know uncle jimbo's blood coursing through its veins uh, so uh yeah so gonna I, surprise this surprise me with a little lowbrow even though he's highbrow the occasion yeah, that's, a, that's of, a great way to describe oh, yeah. it everything okay. we do is is highbrow lowbrow so we do a lot of we're extremely physical um most of our bits and games and, and patterns that we put together in a, in a in a show tend to be based on physicality um okay. so it's a lot of hard-hitting slapstick physical type stuff um that i would say we we do in a smart way and, and that and the way to, to do that is is by um how should i say this we, so we follow energy you know uh -huh. we we find something that we think is funny or fun and then we follow it and we heighten that energy until it explodes with some kind of crazy physicality or physical scene uh and then uh, now we have ourselves a little pattern for whatever piece we are running at that time. Oh, yeah. And so I remember how that's why you need life padding, man. If you guys are up in the physicality, yeah. and so you kind of keep an eye out for that. And you're saying, like, with an improv group, is there like callbacks? Like, is there a series of scenes? You know, so you're saying like you heighten it until it's just kind of combustible, and there's a big slapstick thing going on, and then that's your pattern. Does that mean that later on there's a different scene and you kind of refer back to it? I'm so unfamiliar with improv. I have I've had some right. big improv people on, but I love learning about it. It's just I don't know. It's like in this in this form that you've created, is it like Armando? Is there like a bunch of scenes or something? Yeah, I mean, the, I mean, I guess the first rule is that. There should there should be no rules for improv. You know, it should, <laughs> really, it should be completely organic every time you do it. Um, okay. Even having a form that you sort of loosely follow, in some people's opinions, is, is sort of cheating. Um, <laughs> but those I, motherfuckers, my, that's funny. I don't have that opinion. Um, <laughs> not at Dumb John. You're at Dumb John. <laughs> no, and we don't do the same thing every. You know, we didn't. We hardly did any physicality in our show last night. But three weeks ago, we broke three chairs on stage. <gasps> you know. 
So it, we don't do the same thing every time, but we, our form is we get a suggestion from the audience and then whoever is so inspired from that will take center stage and do a uh, character monologue inspired by whatever the suggestion is. And then, you know, those of us on the sideline, if there's something about that monologue or that character that strikes us as funny, we'll initiate a, a scene with whatever that idea is and then take something from that scene that we think is funny or fun or that we like and and uh we'll either walk on and add something to that scene or start a completely different scene with that idea uh and carry it over and then we just keep following that thread and heightening the absurdity of it or the energy of it or both um until it sort of can't heighten anymore without fizzling okay. and ho hopefully if we're on our game before it fizzles we'll wipe the slate clear with another completely different character monologue um, wow. and then start the thing all over again. And, and how many of those do you do? How many character monologues do you do in the course of it? It's, like it's different every show. time. Sometimes okay. we do one, sometimes we do six. Um, wow. Sometimes, you know, it's different every time. Just so. depending on how quickly the scenes have fizzled. Yeah, sometimes we yeah. stay in one scene the whole show. It just kind of depends how we're feeling. So you can do that. You can stay, like with one word, you know, you can get up there and give yourself a character monologue like you have no fucking net i mean like unlike certain patterns with other like the people you're playing with how are you making this shit up you're just kind of going where the laughs are you try a couple like different i don't know line like threads of thinking from this word and we'll see which one that the crowd likes the most do you are you talking about the monologues or yeah like you're you're general? you're getting up there and you're doing the character monologue yeah. man. like they give you one word and you're you're busting out a monologue yeah, you know, even like in the middle of a show when I think it's time to edit and wipe the slate clean and start a new thread, I'll take center stage and start talking before I have an idea. Just because the time, like timing wise, we got to do something here. You know? uh. um, but yeah, generally I'll just latch it like, uh, I don't know, give me, give me like any word. Okay. I'm not um, going to do it. By the way, I'm not going to do a monologue. But. Yeah. Pro, pro, <laughs> promo code. I'm looking at your thing. Your All right. Promo so, code. yeah, promo code. So, I think promo code immediately when you hear something, you're going to think of something else because how, how has that word affected your life? You're going to think of a story or a person or an experience that you had, right? So, yeah. I immediately think of uh, this guy, Carl, that I'm working with at Recovering Bro, who uh, is the guy who sets up our promo codes. And Carl is okay. a very interesting uh a person who lives in indiana which is a very different uh world than any place that i would prefer to live and uh you know so i can sort of put carl in my bones and uh, just start you know i'm not going to do a carl impression but i'll right. think about him while i talk and things will just come out wow um, or you know i don't have a personal story about a promo code but if i did i might go up there and and just put on some kind of character and, and tell that story and just kind of make it a better story than how it really happened. And then so somebody else though, like they'd be like, okay, I see an opportunity for me to come in. Does that person like knock on the door or they run in as if they're running into a room like, yo, uh, oh, to you start know. a scene from that monologue? Yeah. Yeah, whatever they want. Sometimes they'll okay. knock on a door. Sometimes they'll walk up and join the monologue and start talking. Sometimes uh, they'll yell from backstage. It's just, yeah, there's no, you never know. It's so like even like some other some improv that I was on. Like I didn't even know the fact that you could leave a scene and come back as to the scene as a different character. I was like like I, I'm so ignorant of this stuff because I'm so, I was so bad at it. Like I like stand up a lot. Mm -hmm. I did one improv thing and never went back again because the lack of control. And you guys are just like even as a lawyer, like I'm a lawyer. And I didn't do very well in my LSAT because in the moment, I'm not very logically, like analytically pure. I'm good with words and stuff, but not like I don't make quick twitch decisions. I don't make, I'm always a step slower than the smart people. I was a smart person at my side. And so it's like with improv, it's like, how quick does that calculus happen? Like, I guess right now, when I said promo code, immediately your, your brain went to the guy you work with in Indiana. Is, is it always that quick? Or, I mean, I mean, and I, I suppose that's why it's cool that anybody can get up and do the character monologue because some people might have an idea but quicker than you, right? Well, you see, the way I told you how I do things is not how other people do things. You know, okay. it's, there's no set way to do it. It's you find what, how your own brain works, you know? So, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, like, so if I told you, the word promo code you thought of something just now because you heard the word promo code right no and man i saw i saw it on your i saw it on your bio <laughs> yeah so you thought of my bio oh yeah i was looking at your bio yeah yeah so <laughs> i said promo code you thought of my bio uh so 
so that is a connection. You, huh? Yeah. So now you uh, can talk about bios or you can talk about your own bio and make one up or you can, you know, at least that's how my brain works. Um, but yeah. And then, you know, like you said, you can leave a scene and come back as a different character or whatever. If I, I'm sure you've heard of TJ and Dave. Uh, I, I just heard it in a recent episode. They're like, yeah, that was a huge one a while ago. They're still around. Yeah. They're, okay. they're, um, they're the, big one. The, the, the best improv group alive. Um, okay. And they, they, you know, they probably, they probably are. They're, they're amazing. Um, uh, but yeah, they do that a lot. You know, they'll do, they'll put on a 45 minute show and play 10 different characters, you know, and then it's all one story. You know, they, wow. don't, go all over, they don't go all over the place like Dumb John does. Okay, well, I want, I want to see it go all over the place, and that's why if I go to Improv in Chicago, it's going to be Dumb John. And where are you guys yeah. playing? Where are you guys playing next? Uh, we just finished up a run at I.O. Okay. Um, at the I.O. Theater. We've got a show coming up at uh, the Bug House Theater for One Night Only. Yeah, here, that's um, a good good one, Bug House. Yeah, we're going, I think that's on January 21st, but we're going to do another run at I.O., but we decided to take some time off of I.O. and just kind of do like one-offs anywhere we can get one dude um, that that's self-care that's the recovering bro in your bones man you, yeah you, you, you know about self-care yeah. and we, we follow him everywhere one thing i didn't mention is official mike garrity.com but he's uh there on uh twitter which i'm gonna retweet all the funny stuff including you dressed as a cop that's wonderful because you were uh on an official shoot i think but it's uh migny mike g on twitter uh, mike uh garrity wm on instagram dumb john on instagram recovering bro on instagram the recovering bro damn it meaning fuck fuck that the but that's the only that's the recovering bro i care about you know what i mean yeah <laughs> but i mean we're gonna we're gonna see the next dumb john show because i want to see it all over the fucking place it's just so brilliant what like what improvisers do and it sounds like you guys are at the top of your game so i'm so glad you found each other mike garrity thank you so much for coming on Awesome. It was great to be here. Thanks for having me.